Hello everyone. Welcome to the session on biochemistry. And in this session, we'll be looking into the structures of cyclic nucleotides uh, with special reference on the cyclic AMP. So what are cyclic nucleotides? Cyclic nucleotides are nothing but the purine nucleotides with a cyclic configuration. So these two are the examples. We have purine-based nucleotides which are cyclized are being referred as cyclic nucleotides and we have two purines that is adenine and guanine. Here you can see the adenine based cyclized nucleotide it is known as cyclic adenosine monophosphate and uh, the cyclic nucleotides generally they are formed of one molecule of purine either adenine or guanine then one ribose sugar and one molecule of inorganic phosphate okay so since there is only one organic phosphate and there is a base plus adenine plus a, a, what you call um, ribose sugar plus a phosphate it is a nucleotide and this is actually cyclized form and we, hence it is referred as the uh, purine monophosphate with adenine we call it as adenine monophosphate and with guanine we call it as a guanine monophosphate okay so the based upon the purine we have two kinds that is cyclic adenosine monophosphate and cyclic guanosine monophosphate okay so where it is getting actually cyclized uh, you can see here this is where it is getting uh, cyclized the structural details okay we'll see it uh, in detail how it is getting cyclized now uh, both the cyclic amp and cyclic gmp both act as second messengers or secondary messengers for many other molecules like hormones neurotransmitters etc so hormones neurotransmitters etc considered to be the primary messengers but some of these uh, primary messengers may not be able to enter the cell where they are going to bring about the effect okay so in that case what happens is the message has to be carried from outside the cell into the deeper parts of the cell where the effect has to be brought about okay and this is actually taken by the second messengers that is it could be cyclic amp or cyclic gmp okay so uh, these molecules they are formed intracellularly okay uh, inside the cell and uh, usually it is done with the help of enzymes which are generally referred as cyclases uh, and these are present the enzymes are present in the plasma membrane okay so it is uh, the cyclic amp and cyclic gmp they are produced intracellularly so if this is considered to be the double layered plasma membrane okay so there will be a receptor for the primary messenger okay so let it be a receptor okay and we already mentioned that is there are enzymes which are commonly referred as cyclases okay these are the uh, just imagine this is the enzyme okay okay so these are the cyclases we call okay so now what happens is uh, the when the primary messenger it could be either hormone or a neurotransmitter bind to the receptor a hormone receptor complex is formed this uh, what you call hormone or you can say the primary messenger it cannot enter through the plasma membrane inside the cell so it has to bind with the receptor and this receptor it is associated with some other molecule usually it is known as a g yeah okay so this receptor is known as a g couple receptor okay a g protein couple receptor actually g protein this is a g protein and it is associated with the g protein and hence this receptor is known as a g protein couple receptor and these g proteins they are associated or they are connected with what you call as a cyclases okay i hope you remember the cyclases are the enzymes which convert which actually synthesize uh, help in the synthesis of the cyclized purine nucleotides okay so you have the cyclase enzyme now when the hormone binds to this uh, g protein coupled receptor uh, what happens is that it actually triggers a series of actions and these series of actions finally end in the activation of the cyclase enzyme okay so till then the cyclase enzyme is not active so activation of cyclase enzyme and this enzyme what it does it will uh, bring about the catalysis of uh, certain reactions and actually uh, this will bring about the uh, what you call the conversion of 
at this enzyme the cyclase enzyme it will bring about the conversion of uh, the purine triphosphates normal tr purine triphosphates into the cyclized the purine monophosphates okay so if we are uh, talking about the adenine based nucleotide it could be adenyl cyclase okay so be specific here since it is actually acting upon the uh, atp right adenyl cyclase okay the enzyme becomes adenyl cyclase if it is gm gtp we are speaking about the cyclase will be specific over there so adenyl cyclase will act upon atp okay and it will convert it into cyclic amp i hope it is clear okay so these are actually involved in the synthesis of the cyclic amp and this takes place in the in uh, along the plasma membrane and uh, it is intracellular synthesis where there are specific uh, enzymes uh, known as cyclases uh, those uh, these are specific for atp and gtp so we have adenyl cyclase for atp which will convert it into the cyclic amp so this interest so whenever there is adenyl cyclase activation what happens the cyclic amp concentration will increase okay and this will bring about the uh, effect on the uh, like within the cell so this is how it happens now we can see the structure in detail okay so here we will be learning more about the cyclic uh, cyclic uh, amp not the cyclic gmp so this is the structure over here which shows adenine uh, yeah okay so this is the structure which shows the atp okay here it is adenosine i is missing i'm sorry so adenosine triphosphate you have the adenine the ribose and the triphosphate okay uh, actually only a single phosphate um, uh, amp is in uh, cyclized over here so even though it is atp which produces cyclic amp the pyrophosphate is released before the synthesis of the amp okay so only one phosphate uh, the phosphoric acid part is there in the case of the cyclic amp so you can see here there is a if you just uh, neglect the pyrophosphate part we will have p double bond o and single bonded to three oh groups okay one o obviously it is esterified with the, on the uh, what you call five prime carbon but the other two o, uh, oxygens they are free for making the connection so here what has happened the ch2o it is there ch2o it is connected to p this is the p right and uh, double bond o it is also retained one o is there as oh itself and the other one it has made a bond to the oh on the three prime carbon i hope you remember this is a one prime carbon two prime carbon three prime four prime and five prime right so this is a three prime carbon so what happens this is actually oh okay so it is o minus or oh it is so this oh and this oh it makes a connection and an h2o is released okay h2o is being liberated and a condensation product is formed and that is how it is this is formed so uh, oh over here oh over here it combines h2o is released so what is remaining uh, oxygen is remaining right so a bond is formed like this this is also an ester bond because it is cop right this is also an ester bond cop but what happens these two ester bonds are with the same phosphate molecule and that is why it is getting cyclized i hope it is clear okay so this is how it is formed since it is between the five prime carbon over here and the three prime carbon over here it is referred as three prime five prime cyclic amp or three prime five prime cyclic uh, adenosine monophosphate okay so this is how the name has come so it is the cyclic form of the nucleotide adenosine monophosphate and as already mentioned it is a very important regulator of many metabolic processes going on in the prokaryotes and eukaryotes okay uh, and what is the enzyme involved okay so this is the atp right and during the production of atp or uh, conversion of atp to cyclic amp what happens it is being uh, catalyzed by adenyl cyclase which is an enzyme present in the plasma membrane intracellularly and this enzyme what it does it cyclizes the amp so from atp the pyrophosphate is released and the whatever phosphate is remaining it gets cyclized between the five prime carbon and the Three prime carbon, the five prime, and the three prime carbon, resulting in the formation of adenosine three prime, five prime cyclic monophosphate or the cyclic AMP, right? And the cyclic AMP can further be uh, like uh, 
result in the formation of uh, AMP, adenosine monophosphate. Okay, just addition of water is needed because here water is released, isn't it? So here water is added and this is done with the help of phosphodiesterase enzyme. Okay, it is known as a phosphodiesterase enzyme which will catalyze the conversion of the cyclized AMP into the AMP. And this AMP, it can be used for the synthesis of ATP back. Okay, so this whole process, it is actually that happens inside the cell. Okay, so what happens? The cyclic AMP, it is formed by the hydrolysis of ATP by the enzyme adenylyl cyclase and the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP, it requires the presence of magnesium ions, Mg2 plus ions. Okay, and very uh, trace amounts of calcium ions. So the, uh, uh, actually, um, the intracellular um, uh, synthesis, actually, uh, no, intracellular concentration of cyclic AMP, it is dependent upon two enzymes. One is the uh, activation of adenylyl cyclase that can uh, trigger the synthesis of uh, cyclic AMP from ATP. Similarly, also the uh, action of phosphodiesterase enzyme that will uh, convert the cyclic AMP into a, uh, the AMP. Okay, so uh, what is happening there? When phosphodiesterase is very active, what will happen? The concentration of cyclic AMP will come down. Instead, the AMP will go up, right? When adenylyl cyclase is very, activity is very high, instead of phosphodiesterase, what will happen? Cyclic AMP concentration will go up. Okay, so this is actually these two enzymes play a very important role in maintaining a cyclic AMP concentration inside the cell. Okay, so intracellular concentration, okay, uh, is very, uh, cyclic AMP has a very important role. Now, what are the biological roles we can see? Okay, it plays a very important role as secondary messengers as we have already seen. That is uh, the primary messenger like hormones, neurotransmitters, they will bind to the uh, receptors present on the plasma membrane and when this uh, when the hormone binds with the uh, receptor what will happen it will trigger a series of actions that will end up in activating the cyclases the adenylyl cyclase and this adenylyl cyclase uh, it will activate it will convert atp into cyclic amp and the cyclic amp will bring about further uh, what you call reactions that is uh, Actually, it will um, uh, transduce the signal that was being passed on from the hormone. Okay, so it is a signal transduction. So it plays a very important role in hormone action. It increases the permeability of the plasma membrane. It uh, promotes the synthesis as well as the activation of certain enzymes. You can see here, enhances protein kinase activity. What does protein kinases do? Protein kinases, they will phosphorylate specific proteins. Okay, so uh, what will happen during phosphorylation? In some cases, what happens? is those proteins when get phosphorylated it may become activated so it will show some act, uh, activity okay so inactive uh, non-phosphorylated protein under the influence of protein kinase may get phosphorylated and may it be, may uh, what you call show certain activity inside the cell on the other hand some of the inactive uh, sorry what you call some of the uh, active non-phosphorylated proteins may become inactive on phosphorylation so specific kind of protein kinases are there present which will actually uh, regulate the uh, activities of a cell okay synthesis and activation of enzymes inside modify the action and metabolic processes now it will stimulate the uh, synthesis of uh, hormones right hormones by endocrine tissues the cyclic amp has a role in uh, enhancing the synthesis then it plays a very important role in uh, uh, what you call gene regulation uh, in prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes. Uh, in prokaryotes, what it does is cyclic AMP, it will bind to the regulator G on the operon. Okay, you may have studied lac operon and tryptophan operon, right? So, they, uh, in certain operons, what happens is it is a cyclic AMP which will bind to the regulator G and hence it, uh, 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 what you call, it will promote the uh, binding of the RNA polymerase to the promoter gene and helps in uh, transcription, translation of the part of the operon okay so it is it plays a very important role then we have is this regulation in cell cycle we can see that in the case of cell cycle there is a uh, change in the concentration of cyclic amp during the cell cycle phases uh, during the g1 phase there is a uh, increase in the intracellular cyclic amp concentration and uh, like to uh, when the cell enters the s phase g2 phase and mitotic phases the cyclic amp concentration comes down so it do have a, a role in regulating the cell cycle it regulates metabolic functions like glycogenolysis then 
lipolysis, fat mobilization, etc. They have a very important role. Uh, it and inhibits cell proliferation and prevents growth as well. Okay, so this.